So you've heard of 3D printing where you get a box uh, you know, from MakerBot or something like that and it prints out something. But what if you want to be creative and draw something that's three-dimensional with new materials? Well, now you need CreoPop and uh, we're going to see uh, this new uh, pen that does these cute figures that we're going to see right now. Who are you? I'm Andreas Bernick. I'm the co-founder of Creopop, the world's first 3D pen with a cool ink. And uh, tell me how you got into this. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Swedish guy living in Singapore since about eight years ago. And I've lived in 11 countries. I got a d degree in this country even back. So I've been building technology companies over the past 17 years in mobile communications, mobile equipment, internet and clean tech. And I got involved with this because I know the key investors in this company. So they brought me in very early on to build this from a commercial perspective. No, that's cool. And uh, we have a bunch of uh, art here. What, what, how was this created? All of this was created using Creopop. And it's very different because if you've seen other 3D pens out there, they actually melt plastic to 480 degrees, which is kind of melting silver. It's really, really hot. So this is created with Creopop. We have our own proprietary photopolymer paste, which is pushed out through the nozzle and is cured instantly with ultraviolet light. So it's totally cool and you can even do it on your skin. Yeah, that's cool. Um, can we get a demo of this, uh, how it works? Absolutely. Let's get Nitish, our master. Come on in here, Nitish. A demo master to show how it works. Yeah, yeah. This is $79, you said, right? Yeah, right now it's on Indiegogo. It's crowdfunding. We launched it uh, June 17, and it was fully funded within the first 24 hours. We still have a couple of early birds available if you hurry up for 79 bucks. And after that, it's going to be $89 on Indiegogo for the pen plus five ink capsules in different colors. That's cool. Um, how long does it take to learn to be uh, useful with it? It takes a little bit of time. So we're totally honest about this. This is more like a 3D drawing pen. Imagine you getting a paintbrush for the first time. You're not going to be Picasso or Leonardo da Vinci instantly with it. So it takes a little bit of time. So we like to tell people it's a 3D drawing pen or a 3D brush of some sort. You can create things, but you need to think three-dimensionally and actually do it. You don't just push a button and the face of Yoda pops up magically. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is interesting. Tell me about this space, because uh, we've seen other 3D printing pens, yeah. and, it, and it's an interesting uh, space as well. Absolutely. All of the pens out there are basically melting ABS or PLA 3D printing plastic. So they're based on the logic of you feeding strands of plastic into it, you heat up the pen, you melt the plastic, it's extruded and it cools down. So it's kind of 480 degrees roughly. It's very, very hot. So we're using a totally different technology, which is known as stereolithography with photopolymers. And photopolymers are light sensitive ink. And we've created the world's first photopolymer paste where the viscosity can be controlled. And what we can do with that is to add a whole bunch of different nano additives to the ink that basically changes the properties of the ink, yeah. which is why we can do glow-in-the-dark ink so that you can do objects radiating light, temperature-sensitive ink. You can take a coffee cup and say, I love your mom, and as you pour coffee in, it changes color. We, we do elastic ink, so a Barbie doll can get an elastic hula skirt. Magnetic ink for fridge and whiteboard magnet aromatic ink that smells nice, glittering ink. We're working on ink that conducts electricity, so you can do science experiments or kind of etch your own circuit board. So the real cool thing about Creopop isn't the pen per se. Pen is more our first application to showcase all of the cool inks that we are working on. Tell me, how, how did this company get started? And it got started, it sort of spun out, you can say, from an innovation lab mm -hmm. that have got a bunch of engineers and scientists working on different ideas. And 
This was one of the ideas that came out of that. So we spun it out. The company is incorporated in Singapore. So we spun it out of there and we're now building a proper company out of what used to be a lab idea. Cool. And who are the investors and how much investment have you got? Uh, we have very limited investment to date. We have investment from primarily Hacks Asia, which is a Singapore-based hardware accelerator. Yeah. Really interesting. And they have a three-step program. Everyone needs to come with a working prototype. And then you spend, spend about a month, six weeks, doing the industrial design, planning your crowdfunding, your marketing message in Singapore. You then go to the US for another one to two months to launch your crowdfunding campaign, to talk to press, to do outreach. And after that, they got partnership with Foxconn and other contract manufacturers in China. So the startups go over to China to work on manufacturing the first batch. Yeah. So we're really part of them. And there we go. Very wow. cool. You're over here in uh, San Francisco's wearable world as well, right? Absolutely. We're in the wearable world. We're part of, we're part of their program. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what's the challenge of this? Probably getting people to see that it's it's something that an everyday person can do? Or Yeah, I think uh, we actually have, I mean, we launched it last Tuesday on the 17th of June, and we already have over 900 backers for it. So I think there are people kind of liking it. Uh, the challenge is that it's a cool thing. It doesn't have, I mean, it doesn't solve a pressing immediate problem for someone. But neither does Play-Doh or Lego, if you think about it. And these things, they feel like a fully formed plastic off of a model. Yeah, it's not actually plastic, it's a polymer, but it feels like plastic. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing, since it's not plastic, we, do, we don't need to heat it. And we can add the various non-additives to change the properties. And pens and 3D printing technology based on plastic can just never go there because yeah. it's a limitation. They can only do different colors. While we have eight different types of inks with different properties over and on top of just different colors. And you can probably, uh, do you have to have multiple pens if you want multiple no, colors? No, uh, what item? you can do, the, the pens have little cartridges in them which, which you can change. Obviously, I mean, and you can change this midway through the design. So a problem, of course, with pens where you feed in plastic strands is a little bit more difficult to change color. Here you can just take the cartridges in and out because the cartridges fit fully into the pen, including the nozzle is built into the cartridge. So as you take the cartridge out and put another one in, you just get a different ink of a different color or property immediately. Obviously, if you want to have five different colors and really change all the time, maybe you should have more than one pen, but otherwise it's fine. Very cool. Uh, great idea. Uh, where do you get it? You get it on Indiegogo until, I mean, we're doing crowdfunding on, on Indiegogo right now. So you just go to Indiegogo and look for Creopop, C-R-E-O-P-O-P, -P, and you can get it there. And you can also check out our webpage, creopop.com. Very cool. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Thanks. Thank you.